Hello? This is 911. Where are you? I am on an I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the Okay, okay, I'll stop yelling. I can't understand you. Where are you? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm in the block line. It looks like I'm not in the middle of the block. And my son is even a wheelchair. And I'm surprised to see it. And it's not going to stop. And it's still going to be like this one. Okay, on Michigan Avenue in front of the middle school? Yes, I'm in the middle of the middle school. Okay, well, okay, we'll get up over there. No! Oh, my God, I'm not going to get up over there. John, you need to calm down. I have help on the way. Okay, 473, my colleague's advising a semi hit a subject in a wheelchair. The semi continued westbound on Michigan. My colleague is Jen or a rock. Jen. What direction did the sun I go in? Did it go westbound? I don't know. It's going like, I'm, it's just, I don't know what direction. Is it going out of town or into town? It's going out of town, I believe. Okay, can you give me a description of it? <laughs> it was just, it was like it didn't have a channel. It was white. Okay, white, tra white semi tractor? Yes, yes. It didn't, it wasn't a Hollywood trailer. Pardon me? It wasn't a Hollywood trailer. Okay, okay. It was like the cat part. Uh, hold on. One, 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 Okay, Jim, where are you at right now? I'm standing like I just passed um, in the street. I can't see. I'm like across from Game and Blaze. And I'm like, oh my God. 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 I'm like, From the back of the back lots of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mike Show. I have been with women from around the world. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. In this hour, we're going to talk about a problem, and it's a problem that I know especially afflicts Latinos. But it also affects others, just not to the same extent. I have uh, run into this issue in relationships with Hispanic females. A theoretical conversation, not necessarily anything that ever actually happened, but a theoretical conversation about something that certainly could have happened and can happen to anybody who uh, has this kind of girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, with this kind of family. Let me uh, break it down for you. How many of you, and again, I know Latinos 
almost all of you will raise your hands on this one, but other groups as well, just not to the same extent. How many of you have been faced with a relationship with somebody who wanted to move in family members? You know, there you are, you're You've just moved in with somebody, or maybe you've married them. And you're trying to have a little honeymoon time before the drudgery of having to crank out children and live with whatever stress that provides. And suddenly the person you're with says, You know, my mother's lease is coming up, and uh, rather than sending her to an assisted living facility or sending her to her own apartment, why don't we have her live here with us? Now, as much as I appreciate the culture of Hispanics and uh, not only appreciate it and understand it, but I, over the years, have dated Hispanic women almost exclusively. <laughs> All right, so it's not like I, I am not sensitive to this and that I don't understand it. It's just that uh, as the all-American boy, uh, someone who grew up as... Uh, you know, uh, an American of uh, unclear ethnic origin. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i not too hot on having other people live in my house. As it is right now, I'm not hot on even having a girlfriend live in my house. Or a wife. Much less family members of hers. Now, it's not always mom or dad or mom and dad in some cases. It can be brothers. How many of you have had uh, your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband or wife say that, uh, you know, one of their siblings has to move in? You know, my brother, who's a drug addict, uh, he really needs a stable place to live. And I think he should come live with us. Or... My sister and her husband just broke up, but she needs a place to stay, and I told her she could come stay here. Aunts, uncles, cousins. It's a different mindset. It's a different way of thinking from people who are, who are not Caucasian, not, and again, they're, <laughs> There is uh, quite the number of Caucasians themselves who uh, who like to engage in this kind of thing, but it's not to the same extent. I know this because I grew up in a Caucasian household, but I have dated Hispanic women, and I, I've seen both sides of the fence. Sure, we have people in our own family who do the same kind of thing, just not to the same extent, and I don't like it any better there. Now, I understand this has to do with the definition of family and how people feel about their family and uh, the, the fact that there is much more family togetherness in some families. Uh, you see, to me, when I have a relationship with you, I want to have fun with you. I want to have sex with you. I want to be naked whenever I feel like it. I want to be able to have my friends over. I don't want people who have opinions about the way the house is kept or opinions about what kind of food ought to be in the refrigerator. People who have problem with their living conditions or <laughs> might in any way critique, criticize, or complain about uh, the, the way I keep my home. I also don't like other people being in my business. You know what I'm saying? I don't like other people sitting around where my mail is or my computer is. Because anytime somebody lives in your house, they're going to log on. You know what I'm saying? They'll be logging on and sending email to their friends, and they'll be logging on and chatting. Have you ever had this happen to you? By the way, it's happened to me in the past, and I'm going to make sure it never happens again. Have you ever had to wait in line at your own computer? I had a woman staying at my house who was not even a relative of a woman I was involved with. She was just a very good friend. And she was in the United States for a limited period of time. When I say limited, I mean like six months. And of course, she couldn't afford a hotel. So, of course, we had to have her stay at our place. 
And this woman, who, let's just say, was uh, one of the three F girls, fat and fugly five, uh, this girl, it turned out, and how did I know this? Because, well, I think I had some of that uh, that Spectre soft on my computer. I had some of that uh, spy software, which I shouldn't have done. I agree. But I later found out that this woman was signed up with every online dating service known to mankind. Including ones I'd never heard of. She was on Match.com and JDate and Yahoo Personals. And there were other ones I'd never even seen before. And she had profiles on every one of them. Now, I use my computer, you know, for my late night masturbatory purposes and also for my email. Watch a little YouTube. And I'm remembering I'm having to not only, I'm not going to have any private time in my computer room at home. But I'm remembering having to stand in line. Like, could you let me know when you're done with the computer so I can jump in there? Have you ever had to say that to somebody? That's how you know you're in this predicament. Okay? When you're in your own house and you're asking for permission to use your own computer. By the way, this tubalard never ever got the hint that maybe when I ask if, if she could let me know when she's done, what I'm really saying is, Get off my computer, bitch. It's time for me now that I'm home to use my own stuff. But instead, she go, oh, no, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. When, as soon as I'm done, I'll tell you. Ever have that one happen to you? Uh, now, I, I have four bathrooms. This will never happen to me again. But there have been times in my life when I had one. Ever had to wait in line to use your own bathroom? And you got somebody in there who maybe they ought to add a little more fiber to their diet. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, they are in there forever. Excuse me, uh, you going to be done in there anytime soon? Excuse me! Uh, how long are you going to be in there? <laughs> if that's happened to you, you know what I'm talking about. Because it's happened to me. <laughs> Not to mention people borrowing the keys to one of the cars in your household and driving off in them, sometimes drunk or on drugs or other things. How about people who are not only your family members, but they've got issues? Alcoholism, drug abuse, depression. Maybe they've got sticky fingers and you find things missing around the house. And now you've got to ask, you know, where your camcorder went or where, uh, <laughs> where your iPod is. And you know who suspect number one is, but you can't say anything because it's going to cause World War III. If you've ever had that happen to you, you're in the position I'm talking about. So um, I actually had in uh, one of my prenups, it actually said, no guests over five days. No loans to family members. No gifts to family members. No mortgages, no co-signing of loans to family members. I am not responsible for anybody else's debts but my own. I mean, it was all in there. But I have been with people who routinely, you know, co-sign for family members' loans or routinely have family members move in. <laughs> and he's just not who I am. I like having my privacy. Call me kooky. And you're absolutely right. I don't have the same relationship with my family. Maybe if I had a good relationship with my family, I'd have a different feeling about this. But I don't think I'm the only one because more Americans than ever live alone. Rather than being a roommate, rather than being uh, under the domain of their parents till they're 28 years old, most most Americans now are living alone. In fact, there are more single heads of household now than ever. I just don't think... Um, that the American culture breeds people who want to have other family members moving in. Uh, you know, this is a country where one of our main documents is called the Declaration of Independence. And I read a very interesting book when I was in college about this very subject that tied in the fact that we are raised to believe that we are independent because of the Declaration of Independence. We live in a country where your average Caucasian parent says at 18 years old, it's time for you to go out and get a job. <laughs> or don't let the door hit you on the way out. Things like that. So uh, 
it's a very it's a culture clash when you're with somebody who says, um, "I don't want my mother living by herself. Let's have her move in here." Oh my God, I can't handle that. Can't do it. Are you with somebody like that? Are you somebody like that? Jam. Like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Tom. You know, before I uh, involved seriously with a woman and got married and had kids, I would have thought you were a chauvinist pig. <laughs> but now that I've had the the luxury of experiencing what all that's about, you couldn't be more on target. And God bless you for just speaking your mind. It's, it's appreciated. Well, the people with experience know what's going on. We know what time it is. The Tom Likes Show. Yeah, the Tom Like His Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Hi. Have you been involved with somebody who wants other family members to move into your place? Are you one of those people who thinks that uh, when you get with somebody as their boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, that's to be expected. Family members might move in at any time. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How you doing? Doing okay. Yeah, I was just calling in to respond to what I was listening to right now. And, and uh, it is so true, man, about uh, Hispanic families and, and Latino people. I mean, it, it, well, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm from Puerto Rico. I happen to be in a relationship out here with a Mexican girl. And they say that um, Mexican women have a tendency to, to be really close to their family. But I was raised totally different. By the time I was 18, I had to go out on my own and, and be, you know, independent. So I'm used to being on my own. But when I got with this girl, I was in a relationship for four years. And, and after the third year, it was like slowly but surely her <clears throat> parents started moving in, her sisters. They had keys to the house. They would show up. We'd make plans and we'd have to cancel them because, you know, she wants to spend more time with her mom and dad. So I just, I ended the relationship like two weeks ago. I couldn't take it no more. I, I, I was done. How did she react to that? Uh, you know, she called back and, and did the, you know, I'm sorry, I'll change. But I, I told her, like, we we have gone through this for a whole year. You haven't changed in a year, so what makes me think you're going to change now? So I had to cut the ties. I, I feel like... There was just no respect there. There was no time to, you know, to be alone together. And it just felt like a, a, a childish relationship. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I consider I'm an adult. And I, I was looking for more of a, a real, you know, steady relationship. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be around the mom and dad and the sisters and brothers all the time. I mean, it was every day. You know what I mean? Like you want to come I do. Home and, you just want to come home and chill out and maybe have a drink and talk to your girl or, or you know, have some sex or whatever. But you can't do that under those under those circumstances. So I started feeling like I was being trapped and and, and felt like I was a, a child again, being in that situation. You, you know, so I, I had to let it go. I don't know if it's the if this was a couple of weeks ago. I don't know. I think personally, it's the best thing I ever could have done because I think I need a woman that's more like me. Because I don't really need to be like I'm close with my family, but we don't see each other all the time. Yeah. We call each other up for holidays and weekends and, you know, for going to the park or a family function. But other than that, my brothers and sisters have their own lives. We talk on the phone every, you know, every now and then. We, we live in the same city, so we see each other, but we're in no big hurry to, you know, interrupt each other's lives because it's like everybody else has their own family. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I, I do. She couldn't understand this, so she had me thinking for a little bit like something was wrong with me. And and I kind of felt bad for a while. Like maybe, maybe there is something wrong. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh. Well, Puerto Rico, as you know, is a Commonwealth of the United States. Correct. Many Puerto Ricans move back and forth between the mainland United States and Puerto Rico. Correct. And so, although uh, Puerto Rico is overwhelmingly Hispanic, I do think it's more Americanized than other Hispanic countries. Absolutely, I agree. I think the culture is. Not, not. They say it's similar, but it is similar, but it's slightly different. I think we're raised like I was raised as a as a young kid to to learn and find my way in the world and be independent and not depend so much on my parents because they're not going to be here forever. Right. You know what I mean. So it, it's just the way that I was raised, and and uh, and I just I couldn't understand that 
I can't understand not cutting the umbilical cord at, at some point. When you're like 29 years old, don't you think you should kind of stray away? I, I definitely do. Tony, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rita on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi. I just um, wanted to call in regarding what you're talking about, the uh, topic here. I think that the problem here is that the women, men really truly can't live with us and they can't live without us, but that all your callers that will call in on this topic, the women will stand behind the family and keep that unity together. A man is quick to just go to another house, not care what happens. And I think it's the duty of the wife and the mother to make provisions for the in-laws, whether they live or make provisions for them. I don't say that they have to live under the same roof, but they should make provisions for them. That is well, let's take, let's take me, okay? I make a big salary. Right. Now, I have no intention of getting married, okay? Right. But I make a big salary. Let's say I married somebody... Who then says, you know what? My parents need a place to live. Right. So either they're going to move in with us or we, and that's what it always becomes when you get married, we have to get them a place. Now, why should I want to do that? Right, but you're smart enough not to marry somebody like that that's latching on to you because they know that you have the cash. Well, so no, 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 but that's not my point. Uh, you don't have, would know you, you, don't have to, you, you don't have to, you don't have to be rich to have this happen to you. Right, I agree, but you would not marry someone who already had that in mind. She would have enough sense to know, you know, I have ailing parents, or my fiancé here, Tom, is going, you're going to make an agreement how you should make provisions for the, the uh, in-laws. You're not I, I say if, you, if, if a woman wants to make provisions for her family, then maybe she needs to uh, get a better job or work two jobs to pay for right. that. Why should I pay for that? I agree with you completely, 100%. And then don't marry her because she's a loser. Well, the, 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 here's the thing. I, 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 when I got married, I had a prenup, and it, it specified that. There will be no relatives moving in. Uh, there will be no supporting family members. There will be no loans to family members. There will be no <laughs> gifts to family members without my prior consent, period. Right, right. Anybody who doesn't like that can hit the road. Right, because they live off the well, and their intent is they know that the cash flow is coming from you. They, you have to be very slick. But but it's not just that. You see, uh, it's just a matter of, like, I had this conversation uh, with somebody uh, who didn't want money. They just wanted their parents to have a place to live. I know. I don't, I, I don't want your parents living with me. Oh, neither do I. See, I don't want them. I agree with you completely, 100%, but I do think it's their responsibility to make provisions, whether they set them up in a facility or they just can't throw them out with the bathwater. I, see, like I, I, just, I just don't believe that, that you get married and then you have a right to expect the person you marry. But uh, they to be say, pitching marry in me, on marry my family. You know, that goes, that's a big thing. Well, it's one thing to have to put up with seeing the family on the holidays. It's oh, another I thing know. to have to they pay their know. way. Oh, I can't take it. You're absolutely right, Tom. All Love right. your show. Thank you, Rita. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. I, uh, guy, this this sub subject hit, hits a store point with me. My wife currently uh, let her friend come and move in with us because her friend was dumb and lost her job and got kicked out of her parents' place. Now, I don't know very many 24-year-olds that are in my situation. I mean, I own my own home. I own my own vehicles. Everything I have is mine, bought, and paid for other than my cell phone bill, which my parents still pay for just so they can keep in contact with me. This girl will sit on her duff all day on the computer, and as soon as it's, you know, I'm ready to get onto it, she'll try to pull the whole, yeah, I'll be off in a minute thing, and then I just bring up the fact to her, it's like, hey, I'm putting a roof over your head. I'm paying the bill for that, that computer. If I want to get on the computer, you're going to get your ass off, period. And if she doesn't do what, she, what I tell her, I said, okay, well then, instead of having that nice, comfy uh, bed you're sleeping in tonight, you get to go and sleep out on the porch. And until you can start obeying my rules, I'll quit treating you like a dog. But speaking of rules, why did you allow her to move in? Well, 
her girlfriend, <laughs> by the way, my, my uh, roommate or slash girl, wife's friend is uh, a lesbian. Her girlfriend is paying me a large sum of money to l allow her to stay there. Why do you agree to that? Because I like money. I like money, but uh, you're seeing there's no free lunch or free money. Yeah. Like I told her, though, if, if she doesn't abide by my rules, she gets to sleep out on the porch. Holy it's cow. Well, good luck on that. Tom. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. There's pizza for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old-fashioned mom-and-pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. The way guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. It's the Tom Likey Show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas here at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Ever been involved with somebody who insists on moving in family members? What's that all about? Are you that kind of person? Huh? Brandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Brandy. I had to call in on this subject because my poor husband had to deal with my mother for years now and it took me way too long to realize that he shouldn't be but he, she lived with us for off and on for years we've been married for eight years now he finally kicked her ass out and it's the best thing that could have ever happened to our marriage um how did your mom react to being kicked out um yeah not well but you know she's had to go try to find a place to live and she's basically homeless but trying to you know live with her brother now and uh her boyfriend now and i i'm perfectly happy to allow them to take care of her because i made the mistake of allowing my husband to have to take care of her for all these years and it's not worth it by the way did you just say that your mother has a boyfriend yes she does and yeah. uh, why wasn't he taking care of her he was a he was a fairly new boyfriend of just a couple of months and i per personally i just said you know what if he wants to go take care of you, you you know, that's fine. And my husband got upset at because she was she didn't appreciate everything that he gave her. He didn't appreciate she didn't appreciate all his hard work. And um she completely took it for granted and I unfortunately didn't have the guts enough to do it myself. I'm glad that he did and I support him hundred percent for doing it. Now why did you let her in in the first place? Uh, you know what, Tom? When I got married, I was 22 and completely young and naive. It's been eight years. And, and tell everybody, tell everybody, so that they don't make the same mistake you did. You were too young to get married, and there you were missing home and missing your mom. I um I don't know if I was too young to get married, but I do know that I my mom struggled her whole life, and uh, she's never made the money she should make or handled her money. Yes, she way. did. Yes, she did. She made the money she should make. She got exactly what she deserved. But you know what? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Tom. I completely agree with you. I do. Everybody, and, uh, I, I've said this, everybody out there is getting exactly what they deserve. You know, and she is getting exactly what she deserves now, and I need to focus on my husband and my family and making them happy and make sure that she doesn't destroy that. And I just really felt it important to let anybody know out there, if you're going to let one of your family members move in, it will destroy your family unit, and that's the most important thing. That's my right. My husband's the one who provided my house and my home and our lifestyle. And you know. And if you're not careful, you and your mom will be a homeless roommates. Yeah, and I don't want that. <laughs> I'd rather be living with my husband happily and making right. it Right. <laughs> exactly. Brandy, thank you for that. Thanks, Tom. I love your show. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing great. So am I. Yeah, um, it's, you know, I, I got to coin a phrase like you use the DTB, DTF. You got to get rid of that family. They can't be there at all. Well, I feel that way, but uh, what happened to you? What happened to me was this, you know, I got led into uh, helping out a brother-in-law. He uh, he lost his job, and he obviously was married and had some children that were involved. And at the time, my girlfriend asked if we could help him out, give him a place to stay. And this thing turned into a long-time deal here where I decided, 
I had to get rid of that. You know, it wasn't going to happen. Wow. So, so how did that go? Well, what happened was uh, he came in and, uh, you know, he stayed for a few weeks. I thought he was going to go out and look for a job. Came home from work one day, expected to have these uh, nice steaks and baked potatoes that I made and figured everything would be ready for me on the dinner table. I got there and uh, all the pots and pans, everything that had been cooked in was empty. And uh, I figured, okay, maybe they put the food for me in the microwave or an oven. I checked in there, nothing. I went into the refrigerator, and I knew I had a six-pack in there. Decided to grab a beer. There was no no beer left. see a bunch of people rubbing their stomachs like they just ate, you know, with toothpicks in their mouths. And I just left. I just walked right out of there. You know, I decided uh, I had enough, and uh, I left. And it wasn't the end of the relationship, remarkably so. What happened was I put her out on her own with her brother and said, you know what, if you want him, then have him support you. Good point, Alex. Brittany on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom, how are you? Great. All right, so my boyfriend of, we're like five months now, tells me the other day that he wants his mother to live with us. And um, I I love her and all, I I really do like her, but um, I guess it's some family thing that he's he's german i'm part german uh but i guess it's some tie to the family i don't get it why at 21 are you living with somebody oh no i, I don't live with him but we were talking about kind of the future no 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 i think that it's good thing he told you now yeah yeah you know and i'm kind of hesitant to, you know kind of like well i don't know if i I want to do that if that's what you want. But, um, you know, I'm trying to see what other, if he's interested in any other options. Because I'm, I'm okay with her living in the same town, you know, okay with him even, you know, moving her to a house as long as it's not right next door. Yeah, but what happens when you have to pay for it? Uh, well, you know, that's like, I guess I figure I cross that bridge when I get there. No, 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 dear. No. You, these are the bridges you have to cross before you get to them. All right. These are the issues you have. I know it makes no sense as an analogy, but <laughs> these are the issues you have to deal with before you ever consider having a relationship with somebody. Uh huh. You can't wait until the day it happens. Yeah. Because it will be out of control by that point. Now's the time you have all the control. You don't live with him. You're yeah. too young to be in a relationship anyway, much less be married. <laughs> Yeah. You hold all the cards. Yeah. You have to tell him that's never, ever going to happen in my lifetime. I won't be paying for it. She won't be living with us. That's it. Yeah, that's that's about where I'm at. I'm, I'm ready to... But you have to tell him foot down, just but, uh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> that this will never, ever happen. That if his, mother, his, if his mother is hitting the head with a wrecking ball... And she's an invalid. She will not be moving in. She will not be moving in under any circumstances. Yeah, that's that's what I need to say. Uh, hopefully, I can get up the balls to do it. Why? Why do you need to get up the balls to do it, dear? You do not need this relationship. You're 21. Oh, you're the boss. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Just say no. All right. You won't, will you? I will. I will. I'll say no. When? I'll say no to the mother. <laughs> when? I, the mother. What about everybody else? No. Oh, well, everybody else, but there's all, not anybody else. There's only the mother. That's that's all that's really No left. friends, yeah. no cousins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no friends. <laughs> no. Sure. Yeah, nobody. <laughs> no losers in my house. Yeah. Get a job. Yeah, I don't care if she's retired. If you can't right? pay for an apartment, get a better job. Yeah. If you didn't save for retirement, not my problem. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that it's about the money so much um, as, like, the get some connection. You know, like, he just doesn't want to be, like, far away from her. And I, you know, I'm Well, like, let me get. Let me tell you when the money would be an issue. Let me tell you when the money would be an issue. Let's say you wanted to buy a house. Mm. You just need to save up enough money for the down payment, but you couldn't because you had to pay the expenses of another person. <laughs> yeah. 
That's true. Right? Right. As an example. Yeah. Uh, you need a new car to replace the beater you're driving. Uh-huh. But you can't buy it. Because you about got to buy groceries for mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's Lots a recession out there. Time for everybody to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Yeah, yeah that's true. All right. <laughs> All right. Good talking to you, Tom. I know. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Sam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not hey, much. Man, I had this situation about about a month ago. My brother-in-law moved in. I'm 22, man. He moved in at, he's 29. He said he was only for a week. He was going to look for a job. Not once did I see him look for a job. I spent two months with him eating my food, watching my TV, and we got fed up with it, and I finally, we finally kicked him out. And? Well, that was it. He hasn't been back since. Why did you let it happen? Hey, you know what? I'm up for helping family, but when they when you hand out, they're not your family. And they pull arm. They're not your family. They're not your family. Yeah, I learned the hard way, Tom. (sighs) And by the way, did you tell Dean you have a kid with her? Yeah. Why'd you do that? Like I said, Tom, I, I wanted to help, and I regret it. No, but why did you have a kid? Oh man, I love my daughter. That's, look, everybody says that about their kid once they're born, but why did you need yeah. to have a kid now? Couldn't you have a daughter and love her later? Yeah, but uh, you know what? It happened. No, no. You made it happen. Yeah. Why did you make that happen? You no, want, I'm horny, dude. <laughs> yeah, but, and you can't use a condom? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Why didn't you? I just did that's just it. I just didn't. Because you just think you're never going to be anything in life? Uh, why bother uh, uh, doing the right thing here and uh, you know, make it impossible for me to go to school and uh, improve my uh, my lot in life? Uh, I was never cut off for school, man. Too stupid? <sighs> if you want to say that, yeah. I'm asking. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a screw-up. You're a screw-up? You're stupid? Yeah, I, I, could, I couldn't stand being in school. So what do you do for a living? Son. I'm a truck, truck driver. You're a truck driver. Yeah. Here we go. Jobs guys have when they knocked up their girlfriend. Truck driver. Put that one on the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom. Thanks, man. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate the call. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Marie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Doing great. Good. I just am on my way to work, turned on the radio, and I heard you talking about lending family money. So I thought, hey, I'm going to call because we just lent my mother-in-law money again. Why? Um, that, that's the question that I ask myself time and time again. And you know, the times in the past have been gifts. We've said, okay, you well, know what? But why would you and do that? It's, it's enabling her, and I know we know that. But this past time, she was short on her rent, and I told my husband, "That's not our problem. It's not your problem." Did it, but she promised. She said, "I will do it. I'm going to write you a post-dated check," which is illegal. And, uh, and-, and so we wrote the check out of my husband's account, his retirement savings account. What? Yes. And, uh, you, you took know, money out of his what? Uh, IRA, his four hundred one k. His uh, his E Trade account. His E Trade. So his IRA. Right. And uh, he has an IRA, and you took money out of his IRA to pay your mother in law's yeah. rent. A portion of it, yes, yeah, because we're not in a position financially to do that. Um, you know, long story short, my husband was in the mortgage business for many years, and he's not anymore. Right. So you know, financially, we're not. Well, really when you're not in a position to do something financially. I got some advice for you. Don't do it. I know, Tom. I know. Because you know what happens. She's going to drag you. She's going to drag you into the quicksand with her. I know. You'll all be down there under the freeway overpass with that big man, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.